Well, my friends, Simon from What Culture here, and unfortunately, it's one of those sad videos where not only do we take the tone down, but we sit down a little bit and we just have a chat. There's no script, I haven't written anything down, because I just wanted to talk from the heart, because as I'm sure you're aware, Scott Hall, who I think we can all agree is an all-timer, legendary professional wrestler, and who had a massive, massive impact on the business, has passed away. I don't want to get into the reasons why he had complications through hip surgery. And I know it was one that hit me like a ton of bricks. Like it's just, you see the story, it kind of broke late on Sunday night and then you kind of keep everything crossed. Like you hope everything's going to be okay. And then we get to this occasion and very sadly, I mean, to use a wrestling terminology that I saw a lot of people using, he's not going to kick out. And sometimes when we do these videos, you look in the comments, people are like, oh, you shouldn't be talking about this stuff. But look, you understand how all of this works. We here at What Culture have a schedule to keep and we make lots of videos because that's the point of YouTube. But I know, speaking, this is just personally speaking, but I'm sure the guys and girls feel the same. I can't sit here and do a video about, you know, Cody Rhodes going to WWE or Kenny Omega returning to AEW without addressing this stuff first. Because no matter what you do and what you don't like about professional wrestling, this is the stuff that matters, right? It's the whole, well, quite literally in this situation, the, the life and death stuff, that is way, way, way more important than whatever kind of storyline you don't like or wins and losses or a bad promo, whatever the hell it is. Of course, you can criticize that stuff and we shouldn't lose sight of it, but I also think it's massively important to heap praise onto somebody who has been influencing my life in some fashion for what? 25, 26 years, or whatever it would be. I remember when those Razor Ramon vignettes aired on WWF Raw, I suppose it was, absolutely ages ago. Now, I was basically a fetus. I basically just popped out of my mother's womb, but I got into professional wrestling, and I was like, oh, man, who's this guy? And I walked around and pretended I had a toothpick, and I started going, hey, yo, all the time, even though I didn't know what was going on. And my parents were probably looking at me like, we have not raised this person right, but Scott Hall was just a cool guy. He just was, and of course, later on, we would learn that he was going through some terrible personal issues but I think we just shelved that for the time being and we should just bask in everything that he did I mean he is the king of winding people up I used to love watching shoot interviews with either people talking about Scott Hall or Scott Hall himself because he would talk about it and my personal one was somebody would come into a company be it WWF WCW or TNA and he would say oh man love your finish give it a minute give it a minute give it a minute I can't wait to kick out of it. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if you're a brand new wrestler in a brand new place and somebody is prodding you already? It goes further than that too. Go and find any kind of interview about Scott Hall. Everyone said that dude just understood wrestling. He got the business. He had a great mindset for the business. It has long been said, and I'm sure he'll corroborate it soon. We have, I'm pretty sure he's done it in the past, that it was Scott Hall that essentially had the basis for the Sting character when he went all crow and the black and white, the face paint and hanging out in the rafters. I think he suggested that to Steve Borden. And again, going back to what we're talking about, I'm just ranting and raving now. You know, Razor Ramon was based on Scarface. He pitches to Vince McMahon, like the character, and said, oh yeah, I'm gonna base it on the Al Pacino character. Again, who knows what's true or what's not true, but I like to believe this. Vince didn't have any idea what Scarface was, which is also absolutely awesome. But Scott Hall, he took that, he made it, became a great intercontinental champion. And let's not forget, I mean, we can argue this till the cows come home. Maybe if he hadn't made that jump to WCW, even though that's basically what set a fire under the Monday Night Wars and gave it this amazing Nitro and Raw feud as long as we did but maybe he would have become WWE champion because don't forget he was never World Wrestling Federation champion he was never a WCW champion and I think if you want to make an argument that he may be one of the most well the best wrestler to never hold a world title I'm not going to argue with you I think Ted DiBiase would be quite quite behind as well but it almost it's one of those things like when Cesaro left WWE recently I had manifested an IC championship run for him in my head because it just made so much sense and when people do remind you that Scott Hall never won a world title you're like what do you mean Scott Hall never won a world title because it would just make sense that Scott Hall would have won a flipping world title and let's not forget how massive it was when he did jump to world championship wrestling that's something else I remember watching and it blew my brain because I got what wrestling was but I guess I wasn't totally aware here he was he came through through the crowd which wasn't really massively happening in 1996 he wasn't dressed like Razor Ramon he was in his street clothes he was using his real name and he was going oh yeah you want a war well we're gonna give you a war and you're like wait a minute what is this actually some kind of invasion and if it is how the hell did you get in the building to begin with the Nash and Hall and we know what happens at Bash of the Beach but I stand by it I think Scott Hall was the perfect guy for that like I truly do think of other people that were in each organization at the time I mean maybe a macho man Randy Savage you know I totally 
understand that. But Scott Hall, to me, had more, well, of a real side to him. I guess I'm kind of probably looking back retroactively now. But him and Kevin Nash, especially, as a team, they just came across as legit. And they also came across as guys that probably would have done that. Now, obviously, when I was seeing this on my television, I wasn't aware of the curtain call, and we've talked about the curtain call enough. If you know, you know. If you don't know, you can just Google it. But there were people out there, this may be how the fire built, there were people out there that knew that the click had done this in Madison Square Garden, so they too were probably going, wait a minute, Scott Hall has just jumped ship, so... I mean, absolutely fantastic. The Outsiders are one of my favourite tag teams ever for that very reason, and just... It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, life never makes any sense at the best of times anyway. But for him to come through as much as he did, and of course, I'm sure you would have seen the footage that DDP put out there and the documentaries and all of that. For him to come through all of that, you know, out through all that and get out the other side uh, a more clean and more sober human being. And then this all of a sudden to come from nowhere, well, it's, it, it's just nuts. But I will always have tremendously fond memories of Scott Hall, focusing on what happened in a, in a wrestling ring, because I know what the comments are like, and everyone's like, oh, you didn't talk about this, you didn't talk about that. Yeah, well, it's been discussed, and nobody's perfect, so I don't really think we need to get into it. And before we do round this up as well, like, let's not forget that in a world where you had Hulk Hogan, who may not have been someone that wanted to put people over, and other people of that period being like, oh, I don't really think that's a good idea, Scott Hall went out there and he put over everyone. Go and watch the match against one, two, three kids, Sean Waltman, X Pack, that's on Action Zone or whatever the hell it's called. You can find it on the WWE Network or you can find it on Peacock. This is basically when the one, two, three kid had just started. And Scott Hall was like, no, man, I, he needs to win this. It makes so much, well, it makes for a better story if he beats me. So he did. There's stories out there the first time he saw Jeff Hardy. And if Jeff Hardy was coming in as an enhancement talent, and if Scott Hall was working a squash match, whatever you want to call it, he would ask to work with Jeff Hardy. And not only would he give him offense, he would tell everybody, this kid has got something and we need to do something with him. And he did it with Chris Jericho in WCW when Chris Jericho was on the way up. He was just that kind of a guy. Like he actually would actively go out of his way to try and build other stars, which is another reason that he was so cool. Scott Hall don't need to be doing this. No, I mean, think of all the rest of that didn't do it, that nowadays we barely talk about. And as a completely random aside, but it just popped into my brain, the man, was massive, like he was huge. Because he existed during a time when everyone was like six foot a million, you never actually realized this. And I remember, I think it was Triple H told the story. This is just like stories with Simon now, but I think Triple H told the story. The Scott Hall would work out obviously and try and keep himself in shape, but he could look like a decently shaped guy, but he would go do a couple of press ups and do like, you know, a couple of whatever. He would just blow up. Apparently he could just get such a good pump and he would look like an absolute monster. And obviously I'm into fitness and lifting weights and all that kind of stuff. So I love hearing about that as well. And it's just, I mean, there's nothing I can say, there's nothing I can do, but I, I don't think we can't talk about it. I think that would be ridiculous, but also I think it's nice to share these kind of tales because I'm sure you have your own memories of Scott Hall and I would encourage you to put them in the comments below, especially the one-liners. I mean, there'll be a load of one-liners that aren't popping into my brain right now, but he absolutely liked to tease people I just think that's really funny. In fact, there was a video that went up last week on uh, Hot Wings or whatever it's called, where Goldberg and Big E were doing some promotional stuff for WWE 2K22. And the host asked Goldberg, like, if you were going to talk about one person that sort of got under your skin the most intentionally, who would it be? And he was like, Scott Hall. He didn't even hesitate. It's like, it would definitely be Scott Hall. And I think when you know all the stuff that he did used to do and you hear that, I just thought it was quite nice. And we all remember his Hall of Fame speech, which has been all over Twitter today, which I thought was quite... Uh, well, it obviously hit home with a lot of people that you see his name, you think about Razor Ramon, you think about the, the leap to WCW, but you also remember the whole bad times don't last, but bad guys do, which was poetic and awesome and on today, quite sad. So, of course, I really should have said this at the start of the video. You have to forgive me. I got a bit carried away. All the positive thoughts to Scott Hall's friends and family. Can't even imagine what they're going through, especially because it seems to have come out of nowhere. And let's just keep his memory alive. I know that sounds a bit cheesy, but it's true. Like, he has left a legacy. So let's ensure we keep that around by discussing all your favorite matches, like, you know, WrestleMania 10 against Shawn Michaels, all the kind of stuff he did in, in WCW, his IC run, you know, going back to that. And I also remember when he took on Bret Hart at the Royal Rumble 1993. And at that time, maybe people didn't realize how good he could be. 
Then he had that match with Bret Hart, and I remember especially being, because I was a huge Bret Hart fan, so I'm like, oh no, don't you dare raise a Ramon. But after that, I was like, oh man, I gotta get, I gotta get on board with this guy. So yes, please do share all your stories in the comments below, like I say. And you know all the YouTube stuff, like, share, subscribe, whatculture.com. And I will mention whatculture.com actually, and the channel too, because we'll keep you updated as best we can with any other information that comes out there. But I mean, we haven't done one of these videos for a while, to be fair, but even one more will always be too many. So again, finally, a big salute to all of Scott Hall's friends and family. All the best, and thanks for watching. I know it was a little bit of a different video, but again, I think these ones should. I don't think you want to see me, you know, doing all the blah, blah. I think that's unnecessary. But take care of yourselves. Make sure you have a good day, and I'll see you soon.